I'm white trash and I'm in trouble. Relax and take notes while I take totes of the marijuana smoke. Oh, you want to choke? Gun smoke, gun smoke. Emory. And I don't say my government name. On there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant Emily. Emily. That's my transition name. You know what's funny? The name about, uh, about, about the name Ivory. The only Ivory I've ever met was Black. That, like that, that just defeats the purpose. I've met two Ivories, and one was a female, and it was spelled retarded, and her parents were retarded, and so was she. How how she spell like Eve E Y E E how is it E Y E V E R Y Ivory or I V E yeah wait I V I very <laughs> oh you got to be kidding me she should have spelled it I V A R I because <laughs> she had multiple personalities. <laughs> She's white trash and has multiple personalities. <laughs> Dude, you know what would be really cool? Mm -hmm. Stupid thought popped in my head. What? If Sub Zero and uh, Elsa had a baby, Sub Zero and Elsa had a baby. Yeah. They probably wouldn't. You know, they'd probably just be like modern people and let it go. <laughs> yeah. When fucking when the baby's acting up, Sub Zero's just gonna pull its spine out. <laughs> Uncle Scorpion comes there. Get over here, Uncle Scorpion. <laughs> Sounds like a horrible biker family. <laughs> uncle, it, it does, man. There's my Uncle Sub Zero, my Uncle Scorpion, and then That's there's definitely a white trash and in trouble family. Oh, easily. And, 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 to call your Uncle Scorpion. <laughs> and then they have, they have like one like Asian guy that cooks meals for them named Liu Kang. <laughs> hit myself in the phone in my head the phone. I, I saw I that hmm. welcome back to another episode of white trash and in trouble ej how you doing bud I'm good bro you good it's another beautiful day here in paradise right yeah good weekend um it's quick i i, I wish uh wish it didn't end but i can't control that cannot it's control that 48 hours of your life yeah um but yeah, Sex with me will be the fastest 48 seconds of your life. <laughs> 48 milliseconds. <laughs> 48 milliseconds delivered by with 48 millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how how big is 48 millimeters? Hold on, let's uh, my dick. <laughs> let's hey, let, let's find that. Let's find out how big 48 millimeters is. Hang on, 48 millimeters converted to inches. Okay, two inches. inches. Oh, dude, it's 1.89 inches. That's fucking tiny. Dude, that's like eight times bigger than my dick. <laughs> that's like that's like someone like using uh, kilograms to identify their weight. Like someone who's 300 pounds, they say, oh, I'm 150 kilograms. People, people would say, oh, you're fine. Americans would think that, but like British people and like Egyptian people and like fucking Nairobi people would be like, oh, you're very fat. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't uh, The British use stone, though. Oh yeah, they do use stone. Um, you got a cold, Bubba? Are you fighting allergies? What's going I, on? I, I think it's allergies. Yeah, I already had a cold like a few weeks ago. Yeah, it, it's um, it's blowing down here. <laughs> the um, the fucking wind. Yeah, I'm gonna... gave you a white dragon. <laughs> she gave me yellow fever. <laughs> <laughs> and the did the same thing to me. Um, be before I forget, is you said I saw tap this is Thursday, right? Yes, sir. What time? Uh, seven ish. All right, I'm gonna come. Ooh, I'm gonna come. Love when you come. Yeah, I was thinking about doing. I was thinking about doing ordinance one, but I um, but I think uh, they're doing like That's a like Wednesday, a Wednesday, right? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'll rather just, I'll just go to tap this. I'd rather to go to Newport Richie once, and uh, because I because th I think they're doing like an all women's thing. And I'm like, oh great. Again. <laughs> so um so yeah, I'll I'll just go to to you. I haven't been to tap this in a while. And plus Miranda wants to try their food out. I'm like, yeah, the nachos are pretty bomb. Chat out to yeah. tap this. Dude, their servings are huge. I know. It's like made for morbidly obese people. I love it. <laughs> there are a lot of morbidly obese people that go there. <laughs> Myself included. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> 
I tried to finish the nachos, and you know I can fucking eat. And I was mm-hmm. struggling, bro. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'll get back to those later. Let me get drunk. Speaking of morbidly obese, I uh, I was with a very corpulent, obese woman back in college. Oh, fucking yeah. so sexy. Every, every time I fucked her, she'd always moan. Wait, she would moan what? Sorry, you broke up a little bit. Oh, you couldn't hear that? Oh, she would moan. Did you not hear that? It sounded like you said cookie. Uh, okay, I'll try one more time. I'll move. I'll put the microphone back here. Mm, I broke I'm trying. Try- really? It, it's not. It, does this fucking Zoom not want me to do a Miss Piggy impression? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Wait a minute. If you can't hear it, I'll I'll I'll, I'll send it to you via te- uh, via vo- voice voice. Yes. On Hold on. Oh, we're gonna second. do this. Oh God. <laughs> You know what's all right, I'm sending it to you right now. You know what's green, slimy, and smells like Miss Piggy? What? You know what's green, slimy, and smells like Miss Piggy? Kermit's dick. Uh-huh. You know what else <laughs> is green, slimy, and smells like Miss Piggy? Uh hmm. Who's Dick? Kermit's fingers. Ah. Ah. Wait, I'm ready for this. Hold on. What was that? Did you just make that noise? Yeah, I made that noise. Yeah, I thought that was a monster. But you, you so you you got my text. Yeah, dude, I swear to God, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna have my phone ready when Shannon and I are fucking tonight. And I'll be like, oh. right when I get ready to come, I'm be like, <laughs> ah! I love your impressions, and also like that's fucking awesome that Gilbert Godfrey freaking complimented your impression on. Yes, yeah, so like the ones, the ones who don't know, um, I used to be on TikTok a long time ago, and I uh, did an impression of, I did an impression of the great, uh, great and late Gilbert Gottfried, and he commented on it, and he said, "This is awesome," and it meant a lot, and it broke my heart when he passed away. I'll tell you what, uh, here's here's a good quick story about that. So, the day he died, I did an open mic at Snappers. Uh, yeah, Snappers Comedy Club used to do a open mic back uh, a couple years ago, and I was maybe about. Wait, so when 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 when, when did Gilbert die? What was it like like April of twenty twenty two? Hang on. He died yet yeah, April twelfth, twenty twenty two. So I was maybe about five months into doing stand up at the time, and. That was the first open mic competition I won, and I won a guest spot, and I did a, an impression of Gilbert that night. That's pretty cool. It is cool. I I, I was like Gilbert impression right now, so everybody gets to hear that fucking amazing. All right, are you ready? <laughs> How do you know you're at a gay picnic? All the hot dogs taste like shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so did you hear that? I heard that. But you couldn't hear Miss Piggy. No, try it again. So you get the cur and then the very end where you're like, Beep. maybe it's because I'm maybe it's because uh, Zoom can't pick up like a high register noise or something. How about cur me? There you go. There we go. That was it. <laughs> you gotta Just do not dole it down for fucking Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I want to include more of my more impressions for stand up. I think uh, I, I think that there's there's something going on, like something good. I've been thinking about uh, adding another one as well with, with the SpongeBob thing I did. I want to say, I tested Patrick firmly grasped <laughs> Yes, and the other night at title, I fucking wish you would have ended your set one more time hitting that SpongeBob laugh I because should've. every time you did it, they were dying, dude. I was like, I was listening, I was listening to, uh, over to the fucking, um, yeah, to the audio. I, like, I can hear obviously you guys laughing and Miranda, Adam, and, and Sydney, his wife. And um, then all of a sudden, I heard, was hearing more people laughing. I, and Rick Ratliff was fucking laughing too. And he he's very hard to make laugh too. I mean, <laughs> he isn't because, you know, I mean, he knows, he knows my stuff and your stuff very, very well. But, I don't know. Like him, like he was like smiling. He was kind of cute. He was going like this. 
<laughs> Rick is, I love Rick. Rick is so interesting. He really like, is. He is such a quiet, reserved person. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but once like you're cool with him and he talks, you're oh, like, yeah. this is a fucking gym. <laughs> He's a, he is a piece of gold and we need to treasure him. Um, I know he doesn't have like enough time, like 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 thirty like twenty over over twenty, thirty minutes, or whatever, for like uh, an, an Ocala show, but I might do what you do and I might get him to host one 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 night. And maybe I'll like headline or something. Yeah, maybe one time that I get him to host, I'll be able to sit in the audience and watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I like when we saw well, when I first saw him. I was like, everybody else was already walking out, you know, mm -hmm. doing their thing. Yeah. And he got up and, like, his jokes were on point, you know? I'm like, shut up, everybody. Come on, this guy's good. <laughs> Eric's, he's great, man. I can tell and he. I told, good. Uh, Steven and I were talking the other day, mm -hmm. uh, Ferrer. And I was like, you know, you can tell the difference for him and Rick when they're comfortable. Yeah. You know, like a, a lot of comics, you know, when they're comfortable in a room. You know they're on. They're they're loose. They're you know. Oh yeah, I oh. mean like 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 you know I hate to toot our own horn, horns, but like you fucking crushed it, and so did I. Because like you know, titles like you know people know us, and we're comfortable in a room like title, and especially it was a night where people didn't you know not a lot of people didn't see us before, but you know we just went up there, we fucking you know we we did our job and we did it pretty damn good, man. Yeah. I uh, Shannon was like, oh, so it's you know, you know supposed to be a packed new crowd. Are you gonna do like your routine? And I go, maybe, but I love doing the 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 bottom of the barrel is what I like to call it because they mm -hmm. do the, they call it the bottom of the barrel in uh at, like, in Austin. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and at uh like the uh the mothership, yep. breaking, uh comedy uh club, the one in. The store, yep. you know, all of them, they call it the bottom of the barrel because it's fucking idea stone in a bucket. The hate bucket is like, okay, it's cool, but like too many people are actually trying to put like real hate in there. I know. You know like you and I should live in it. <laughs> 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 Wait, who, who is this I? What are you talking about? <laughs> Dude, the best was like, I love Hollingsworth. I think he's really funny. He's, he's a funny. very aggressive comic. Yes, he is, yeah. And he, him, Corey Hilliard, and not to toot my own horn, me, me, yeah. but myself, yeah. I think are the best at pulling from that bucket and having a ball. I agree. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, you three fucking are great. But I think you're definitely the best at improvising. That's why I think you would be an amazing crowd work comic, dude. I think you could do crowd work for like an hour and, and, oh, not, yeah. and not get bored. You would get everybody, even the fucking staff. Like, yeah. Well, I, if you I, saw me at one event doing crowd work, I fucking love it, dude. Well, I like, like I like I said before, and I'll say it again, you turned into Sam McKinnison that night. <laughs> oh! well, that was also like a very like kind of negative type of night, you know. Like hmm. with a good crowd, it's even more fun. Yeah, you know, that was a, I had to do something to get their attention and get them to stop like disrespecting the comics. Yeah, they ain't getting no respect around here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Rodney. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let me tell you, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm such an ugly kid growing up. How ugly was I? My mom used to dress with me with a bendy straw. I get no respect. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one where you talking about? Uh, I asked the taxi, uh, I, I got uh, out of the plane. At the airport, I asked the taxi driver to take me somewhere I could get laid. He took me to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. What well, was well, well, another good one he did? <laughs> so many. The other, the, other, the other night, the other night, I went to a bar. I went, I went to the bartender. The bartender, I, I said to the bartender, "Hey, show me something that's crazy. You show me a picture of my wife, or <laughs> something like that." I don't fucking know. Uh, yeah, I was on uh, Carson. So yeah. Shad and I started a show on, I think it was Discovery Plus, mm -hmm. um, and it's called The Decades, mm -hmm. like, it's got 60s, 70s, and all that. We started with the 60s, and, like, you see Dangerfield fucking popping up on Carson and shit, and, like, Carl and all that, and, like, ah, man. What like, how time. cool would it be to see those guys back in the day? Dude. <sighs> 
man. I mean, sober, hooked up. I mean, stand up right now, it like you know, it's super huge. Like, like there, there's a lot of great comedians, you know, up and coming or ones that that have been around for a good bit, but people are now starting to hear. Yeah, man, you know, it's a good time for comedy right now. Um, yeah, and big time comics. Oh yeah, ho- ho- hopefully, hopefully it continues, man. Hopefully, it fucking continues. And yeah, and, and I remember because I remember, uh, yeah, when you when you got emotional that that one uh, the one time after the podcast after the 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 show because because you were like, yeah, man, it's just, it's just unfair when you when you saw you know LJ and Corey up there eat a bag of dicks because no one was paying attention and I and I I felt I, I totally understood what where you're coming from too because those guys have been doing comedy long, longer than us and it's like yeah like 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 why the fuck would should, should they waste their time you know, dealing with stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, man. But, you know, I- I'm sure that isn't their fucking first rodeo <laughs> when it came yeah. to a crowd being unresponsive. So, so LJ, Sean Guest, LJ Brock, Sean Guest, Corey mm-hmm. Hilliard, and a couple of others, uh, you as well, yep. all told me uh, one really crucial thing that it's stuck with me and I, I'm fine with it. But at the same time, everybody knows it fucking sucks the most cock ever. You got to get comfortable with the silence. Yes. Silence is, is funny though. It can be funny. Like if you, like if you say a joke that eats dicks and is just silent, but you like know how to like, kind of, you know, make funny yourself after then the crowd will fucking laugh with you. Like, they, they're like, they're been t- like, cause a lot of people will, you know, get silence and then they'll go immediately to the next joke and kind of start laughing at themselves just so they like kind of feel good. You know, just say, yeah, that was a bag of dicks. And then you're like, hey, right, here's another one. <laughs> well, like a certain person that we know, I'm not going to name any names or ethnicities, but we all don't know who he is gets fucking mad and starts yelling at the crowd when they don't like <laughs> I love that's a great inside joke. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like so how we spend let's the talk about these articles. What do we have? <laughs> I like how we spend the first like 15 minutes. It's up just being on, on it, it, it is the best, best part. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I know. I like to build it up so that way, you know, we're kind of loosey goosey so we can make fun of the article. Oh, yeah. So, um, let's all right. be honest. Our articles suck dick, oh. but us having a good time. <laughs> it, see, that, that, that's what it's all about, man. That's what it's all about. I don't give a fuck about the articles. I just like talking with you, okay? Yeah, nobody's here to find out what the fuck happened in the world, okay? <laughs> and, so, why try to so, news or see it? <laughs> So white trash and in trouble for the ones who don't know, uh, EJ and I, we go ahead and we uh, find amazing, bizarre, hysterical, crazy, horrible articles about people that are white trash. They don't have to be specifically white or anything. They could be anything. They could be they could be uh, fucking African American. They could be Greenland, or they could be Antarctica. Or British fucking royalty. <laughs> or or royalty. You know who you are. <laughs> so. We had a couple last week because we had our significant others. Miranda's was pretty fucking wild. <laughs> yeah. I, dude, I did not expect Chong Chong. <laughs> yeah, hers was, I think, like a Chinese restaurant, like ate one of their like employees and they found like a torso or something. <laughs> yours, I forgot. I forgot what I'm yours was. Sure you escalated that to be a little more right there. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they ate an employee. They found somebody <laughs> dead in the dumpster. <laughs> Like Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, Panda fucking... Express is going down two points on the S and P. I mean, they got to save money somehow, and and fi- firing people costs way too much money already. So all they got, all I mean, they can do is just kill and eat the person to say they quit. They fucking quit on us. Uh, <laughs> uh but Dude. mine was oh. about a guy who got pulled over and he called the cops on himself. Pretty dumb. But smart at the same time because he didn't want to kill anybody. Shannon's yeah, was he didn't want to get a DUI. What, what, what was a bad guy. what was Shannon's? Hers kind of confused me a little bit. What was it? Shit. Yeah. 
I love that you always do the recap. I'm like, I don't fucking you should do, come on, go on. Just so fucking like fucking. you and her were both gonna do the same. Uh, we were, yeah, we both had we oh, we both. She did the the king cakes in New Orleans. Somebody oh, stole the king yeah, cakes and the babies uh, in it. That's right. And what was yours? <laughs> Something stupid, <laughs> probably. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll I'll go first on this one actually. So, uh, all right. So this one took place March twenty seventh, twenty fourteen, at eleven ten p.m. It's a, it's an American one. I've done fucking two British ones in a row, and I just can't read British for some reason. Oh, it's so easy to shit on them. Yes. But I have a shit. All right. Teen Omaha carjacker stumped by stick shift. Mm. Stick, so a, to stick, a, stick, a, stick a fork in him. He can't drive. An, <laughs> arm, an armed Omaha teen carjacker. I, I thought I said Cracker Jack for a second. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that he can't read British. He's just dyslexic. <laughs> I'm just white trash and stupid. Uh <laughs> An arm Omaha teen carjacker. I don't have my glasses on. Uh, out on Bond is back behind bars because he stole a woman's car early Thursday morning but was stumped by the stick shift. That's a millennial anti-theft device. All right, so this is a... Yeah, for real. I can't even drive a stick shift, to be honest with you. So I'm kind of screwed if I'm a fucking carjacker. So I can't pronounce the name. It's like Congolese or something like that. I'm just going to call it Mangina Mangina. Wait, send it to me. Let's see. I love trying to pronounce foreign names. I, 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 I think it's like Maganya or something like that. It's it's African. For, for, for We're just going to go with Mangina, Mangina. Yeah, I'm going to call Mangina, Mangina. I... The closest thing to it is... Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I just texted it to you. That, that, that's, how, that's how it's spelled. Yeah, we're, so we're, we're just going to call him Mangina, Mangina from now on. Nganga, Nganga. Yeah, I was gonna say Magunga Magunga or something like that. Mm, 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 mm. Like when you suck it on a titty. Mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> like apes fighting. EJ. I said apes. EJ. Dan and I just watched Chimp Empire. Okay. You watched what? Chimp Empire on Netflix. <laughs> So what's what's really funny about it, right? Stop. She's laying down, getting ready for bed, and then well, we're laying in bed, we're watching a show, and she's like, hey, "I'm gonna get ready for bed." And I was like, "All right, I'm gonna put a show on, and just something for me." And I start Chimp Empire. Like you know, they, they're they're very like for people who think stupid monkey. They're they're no, very they're human like. They have they've got the kiss ass that's trying to work his way to the top. They've got. The asshole that's in charge, you know, they're alpha. They've they got have a albino one that looks like Joe Rogan. What's the guy? Side no, no. <laughs> not touching it. <laughs> Too easy. It's a setup. I know you. <laughs> oh, you know me. <laughs> well, no, I know that you know me, and when you do certain things, I know it's for me to react. <laughs> Not today, and, sir. And then you try to, and then you try to one up me. Not today. <laughs> Not today, motherfucker. <laughs> but uh, we were watching it. Well, I was watching it, and then Shannon's like, she's laying behind me, and she goes, "You're an asshole." Like, what did I do? And she goes, "Well, now I'm invested. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't go to sleep now." Like she sees the cute look on the baby monkey's face, and they're like, "It's, it's baby. It's luckily not going to make it." And she goes, "Aww, <laughs> can't watch this before bed." I was like, "You're supposed to be going to sleep." <laughs> oh man, they're very intelligent, and like, you know, watching this show, you see so much things about them, and it's in the Congo, in a remote area where, like, normally a chimp pack is like sixty people. This is like a hundred and twenty. Mm, yeah, you know, and they've got so much to pick from, and they, and they're seeing, monitoring their behavior, and you just see like so much shit that's going on. How did we get sidetracked with monkeys? Me explaining I wasn't being a racist. God damn! Tell you what, those monkeys in Africa—they sure know how to get a hold. Of you. Can I continue now? <laughs> 
<laughs> enough tequila there, EJ. Jesus Christ. Enough. What does that even mean? <laughs> enough. All right. Mangina, Mangina, 17, ran up to Melissa Peters as the woman prepared to drive her 13-year-old son to school around 7 a.m. He didn't say anything, the 48-year-old mom told the Omaha World Herald. Oh, my God, he's got a gun. She blurred. She... <laughs> Do you think she said it just like that? Oh, my God, she's got a gun. He's got a gun. <laughs> she blurted out as a teen jumped in her white Dodge Caliber hatchback. Mangina tried to start the car but struggled as he started the windshield wipers <laughs> and flicked the lights as he tried to work the manual transmission. That reminds me of uh, Jumanji when uh, Robin Williams who had been lost in the jungle for years was trying to start the car but he's like fucking opening, trying to open up the fucking like uh, the, like the fucking hatch to the uh, to the top of the convertible and shit. He's just like, and you guys know how to drive? My daddy's let me park the car out of the driveway, but it's been fucking 26 years. <laughs> I'm 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 just saying how fucking cool would it be? That'd be a fun that'd be a great skit right there where like you're trying to like say like a person is about to go to work and someone tries to rob their car but they don't know how to drive stick and they're just like fuck man hey do you know, can you help me with this? So he's teaching them how to drive stick shit <laughs> <laughs> and then fucking teach You're doing it wrong. You gotta press the clutch first. Jesus oh, stop. <laughs> Feather it. Feather it. Find the <laughs> What do you mean by feather it? This isn't a fucking airplane there's no wings there's here a happy medium bitch find it i think we, you're I, stealing my car i'm helping you you ungrateful prick i think i think we just we fucking could do a skit this weekend or something man i'm so down for that <laughs> let's fucking do it anyway anyway um yeah that'd be a great fucking sketch right there i'll love to see that and we're gonna fucking do it all right Witnesses said the teen tried about for about seven minutes to no avail. He just stayed in the, that car forever. <laughs> do, you think, do you think Melissa was going like this? Dude, hurry the fuck off. And he's like, Ugh. Ugh. fuck. fuck. Whoa. <laughs> that was terrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. All right. Um, fuck my ass. All right. I was on the phone with the dispatcher. As the cops arrived, Mangina ditched the ride where it had slid into a yard, and he ran up an alley where he ditched the gun. Cops tackled him to the ground before he could get more than two blocks. For those of you who still have stick shift vehicles, there is an advantage in today's time. Big point right there. Uh, said the Omaha Police Lieutenant Mike McGee. He told the reports at the scene, young people don't know how to drive them. Uh, I really don't actually. No, no one ever, no, no one ever told me. I, I'm sure I can learn. To... Yeah, it's not. It's your most difficult part would be downshifting. You know, like getting used to that. I will say this I actually. Know. There, I had a job when I first when I first moved down here. I went back into working to in, in, in a, uh, with a meat purveyor down in St. Pete, and I, I got and I was going to be a driver because I used to you know drive like thirty foot box trucks. So, but the only truck they had available was a big fucking truck with a stick shift. And mind you, I'm like, yo, I don't know how to drive stick. And they're like, oh, well, you'll learn in the truck. And then I'm like, I don't want to kill anybody or myself. I would rather learn stick in like someone's car. <laughs> I don't want to learn stick in a fucking truck that can literally take out like a crowd of people <laughs> in St. Petersburg. <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> oh my god! I learned in an eighty-seven Jeep Comanche. See, you uh, didn't you, you didn't learn in a fucking thirty-two thousand pound box truck. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah so I'm, so. I guarantee you, if I was to get behind a manual today, like it's been so long since I drove stick, I guarantee you, I'm stalling at least five. Like just trying to find the the soft spot in the, in the clutch, you know. The that, soft that's spot. definitely going to be. So like when you like, press the clutch in mm, and you ow. ease onto the gas, there's a sweet spot in between you letting off and you pressing down. Yeah. That yeah. you have to find. Once you're going, if you got if you find the sweet spot with your RPMs, you can just slam it in. Never mind. No, I'm not going to teach you. You can just <laughs> slam it. In. Wait, are you trying to explain the birds and the beast? You don't you? need to press the clutch when you're going down the road. You actually don't need to press the clutch. If you can find the sweet spot into the motor, yeah, you can shift into the next gear. <laughs> yeah, 
Hell yeah. You can, <laughs> you can also use the clutch to down to to slow down before you use your brake. I'll I'll don't, remember. Don't worry about it. I'm not, you know, I don't I'll, have a manual I'll, anymore. I'll, I'll remember that. All right, cool. So (laughs) Mangina will be charged as an adult, and he is held on suspicion of robbery. He'd been let out of jail March 14th on a $10,000 bail after being arrested for three robberies. He's accused of holding up stores with a knife and making uh, making off with merchandise and cash. In this one, he changed his modus operandi. He used a gun and tried... (laughs) Fuck off! Fuck off! Fuck off! I don't have my glasses on. Oh, shut up! I've never stood. I've never stood trial. God damn it! Listen, his modus operandi. <laughs> Did I at least get the first word right? Modus, yes. Modus operandi. Fuck you know off. what it means, right? Uh, it's something Latin. Uh, what is it's it like? The way of doing things. The way of doing things. Yeah, that's literal translation is a way. So, so literally everything we're doing right now is a modus operandi. Nah. <laughs> yeah, sure. We all have our own modus operandi. All right, fuck off. I'm gonna. I'm about to finish it. I just I thank. Love you. No I know, rest. I know you love me. I'm just stupid. I I just thank God I'm still alive. Peter's told the world, Harold. I uh, thank God that he didn't shoot. He could have shot us. And it was written by S. Goldstein at New York Daily News. Would be a fucking Goldstein. I think that would be the first time that a mangina shot uh, Peters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Fuck you I, for, for me not thinking of that one. <laughs> when you first said mangina, and then I was like, okay, we'll go with this. And then you said her name was Peters. I'm like, oh. bro, you got to. On this. <laughs> yeah, I I I would have, but I I was too busy fucking sulking in my my stupidity with modus operandi, dick. <laughs> modus operandi. Where's modus oper Chelsea? <laughs> modus modus operandi savage. Ooh, let me tell you something, brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am not guilty of this. I am super not guilty. I didn't rob any bitch. Is it bad anytime I hear not guilty? Jay-Z pops in my head. He lives in there rent free. <laughs> not guilty. Y'all got to film me. <laughs> I think of OJ when people say not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> did we watched it tonight. Somebody put on the freaking uh the, the the isotoners and I was like I OJ <laughs> alright well there's no really conclusion Mangina is very in trouble there's no update I'm sure I'm sure he's probably out of jail you know he, he, probably, <laughs> he, he, probably, he probably you know got bailed out again for a couple other robberies and stuff because that's what the Democrats like to do they reward bad behavior I'm I'm just gonna stop it right there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Mangina, Mangina of Omaha, Nebraska, you are white trash and in trouble. EJ, fucking you are next, pal. You're next on the open mic list, bro. <laughs> oh, we can't wait to get a hold of Mangina when he gets <laughs> <laughs> Mol- molester <All> right. Peters. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. There it is. And I sh- farted. All right, go ahead. All right. So you know how I like go through and I find a bunch of shit from like the news and stuff all the time. Of course, like, yeah, yeah. Annoying as fuck. Um. So yours was in Nebraska. We're gonna stay in the Midwest, fucking breadbasket states here in Wichita, Kansas. Ooh. So a reporter went on air. And talked about an incident that happened. A man was arrested, for, or almost arrested, for a bomb threat at Home Depot. Okay. Now, I think we've all been in the situation before, so let's talk about it. She read this on air, and then she realized she got set up. She's not even the white trash in trouble. She's just a ditzy blonde on the Wichita News Network. However... There's no name to this because the guy didn't get in trouble. But he went into the bathroom of Home Depot and he told everybody, get out of here. I'm about to blow this place up. 
and customers left screaming in the heartland of America <laughs> and called 911 <laughs> and said, there's a customer. He just went into the bathroom and he said he's about to blow the place up. Please get the bomb squad here. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but I usually make a stupid fucking remark when I go to the bathroom if I've got a shit really bad. <laughs> I'm about to blow my bowl. Ah. <laughs> now, out of the, all I can picture is some fucking Karen who was standing outside of it by the women's room and some dumbass was in there and was like, are you going to blow it up? I was like, some guy just started to blow the bathroom up and she's mm -hmm. like, oh my god, tell the cats! <laughs> so, <laughs> a witness said, we have it. We we just had a customer here, who may what may have been a bomb threat. Oh. He said, "Uh, somebody told me there's a bomb in here. You need to leave the building." He said it three times. <laughs> now, when the man was asked, <laughs> I can't because I just pictured an idiotic situation. They got out of hand. And that's it's exactly what this is, right? You and I would have done. <laughs> How easy could any of us get in trouble for, for walking into a store and saying this? Like, hey, we, what do you say when you leave the bathroom? I wouldn't go in there for about 35, 45 minutes. Right? <laughs> I'm about to blow this shit up. <laughs> Yo, get out the way. I'm about to blow this fucking place up. <laughs> so, um, but it happened February 14th of 2019. So Valentine's Day, somebody almost went to jail for a bomb threat. Bro, that's that's another great sketch right there too, man. Like, <laughs> oh, like I feel like this is gonna be great. Oh, dude, that that'll be a oh my god! If we if we're just like everyone get out of the way, I'm about to blow this place up. <laughs> so. Another witness said that his words verbatim were, "Y'all, you all need to get out of here because I'm about to, I'm fixing to blow this up." First of all, anytime fixing is said, you know it's a redneck. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, just... I'm fixing to blow this shit up. <laughs> like, what are you fixing, bro? I'm fixing to do this. I'm fixing the shit everywhere. <laughs> The guy didn't stay there. Obviously, he didn't think anything of it, right? He went in there, blew the bathroom up, took his shit. <laughs> he left, and they looked at the cameras, saw uh, this guy's license plate, tracked him down, and police said once they tracked him down, it became clear immediately <laughs> that this was all a big misunderstanding. They said, did you threaten to blow up the bathroom? He goes, I couldn't help myself. I had to shit so bad. <laughs> Dude, imagine the police hearing that. <laughs> to, were you threatening to blow up the bathroom? I couldn't help it, man. I've had the shit so bad. And then the police <laughs> were like, all right, case closed. You're fucking done. That's brutal. Like, Wait, did you say you were going to blow it up? I meant the toilet bowl. <laughs> like, can you imagine if he got arrested for that? Really bomb I left with a stink bomb. <clears throat> what are you in here for? I beat the shit out of my old lady and I killed his sister because she was snooping in my business. <clears throat> oh. You. <clears throat> I took your shit in a Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so oh, any updates on this guy? Huh? Uh, no info. They didn't release his name or anything because obviously it was a stupid misunderstanding why I have the guy in the paper or on the news for this. That's so good. However, the clip is gold. Oh, the clip. I can't hear it. Hey, you know what? Hey, send me the link. I can probably uh, pull it up on screen share. Okay. Okay, let's... Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, actually, what's the title? I could just search it. What's the title? Uh, scare at Home Depot, Kansas. Uh, bomb threats, bomb scare in Wichita, Kansas, from the Home Depot. You'll see a blonde, an older blonde <laughs> reporter. <laughs> like, 
Uh, hold on, I think I I found this guy. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. All right, hold on. Yeah. I can. All right, share screen. Can I? Um, uh, hopefully it can get the audio because I have. Hopefully I don't like fucking restart this whole thing. Yeah, share screen. Uh, here we go. All right. Let me know if you can hear this really quick. Can you? Nope. You, you can't hear that. Fuck. There might be a delay though. Hold on. All right. Try it again. Hold on. Did you hear that? No. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Hold on. Uh. Hope I don't have to like fucking advanced sharing options. Button, stop share. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I might have to fucking um I would have to like probably like end it really quick and uh and get back in, yeah, but that's we'll put it on at the end of it. All right, it's still gold. That's fucking fun. <laughs> the guy's not in trouble. Maybe he's white trash. I mean, oh, he's white trash. He's definitely not in trouble. Though. Back a case. No. I he mean, slams back a case of Natty Light a night. I'm just saying, if this guy <laughs> getting off from his blue collar street, if this guy ever did stand up, that that would be like his best bit, and he can continue that using that bit for his entire career. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Hmm. It's a good moment. Good moment to laugh at. <laughs> Figure to keep it light. We can all relate to blowing up a bathroom. Oh, yeah. Dude, I blow up bathrooms all the time, man. So, my first few shows. Yeah. <laughs> get to the, the venue. And I'm like... I ate dinner. I didn't want to be hungry because I'm a I'm a prick when I'm hungry. I wanted to be able to interact with people and not be an asshole, you know, be hangry. Yeah. So I ate pretty good meals every single time. And before going on stage, you know, your nerves start. And I'm I kinda I'm pretty good at staying like a duck on water. <laughs> Calm on the outside, but underneath it all fucking ninety to nothing, you know. And uh my nerves were getting the best of me those first few shows where I went to the bathroom, I blew it up. The first time was at Ordinance One. Right? Mm. Shout out to Brett Kuyper. You run a great venue there. Um, Shout out to Brett. He's the you man. Know, there's two bathrooms that are across from each other, mm -hmm. and there's no labels whatsoever. Right? There's no man and woman. It's just bathroom, bathroom, oh. al baño, al baño. <laughs> Every man for themselves. Go to walk out of there, and there's an old lady standing there, waiting to go in. And I was like, I just dropped the bomb in there. I would not go in there. And she goes, somebody's in the other one. I was like, just wipe the seat in the other one and go in there. I promise you, you want nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got on stage, I saw her lean over like this and start talking to her husband. And I promised you from the depths of my soul, that bitch was ratting on me about stinking out that fucking toilet. <laughs> I can only imagine if she had called me up. Oh, man, that's funny. Dude, I bet you anything, her shit was probably worse than yours. Old old people shit is no, like that was a cooter. Yeah. <laughs> nah, Only man. I, I I I'll tell you what, man. I remember when I was a little kid, me and my brother. I remember um we both had to use the bathroom. Well, he went he had he went first because um, you know fucking he was like move bitch. And, but so and we're at we we're, and we were at my 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 aunt's house over in New Smyrna. And it was like a little family family get together. This was years ago, like yeah, fucking Georgia? God. No, uh, Florida, New Smyrna Beach, oh. near near Daytona. Oh. Um, so, so my brother, he he goes to knock on. He goes, you know, we we're taught to knock on the door. You know, it's like, mm, hey, who's in there? No one's answering. And so he goes to knock again. No one answers. So then he opens the door, and it's my uncle's mother, who's like in her fucking nineties at this point, and she's like, yeah, yeah. and. We we smelt the whiff of fucking old 
dying on the inside shit. People, people dying from the inside, fucking just come out through the. It, it hit us like. Remember the movie a day after the day after tomorrow when like the entire when the uh, the fucking air starts turning like negative two hundred degrees Fahrenheit and people start yeah. freezing and dying right there. Yeah, that's what that, that's us. We were like, oh, uh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was that that was disgusting. And then and, and me working at retirement homes, smelling fucking you know old people bathrooms and stuff. Man, that was fucking nasty. <laughs> As- as Manny would call it, Abuela Chocha. <laughs> Fucking Manny. And for those of you that don't speak Spanish, it means French fries. <laughs> if you get home tonight, ask your mom for some Abuela Chocha. That's fucking funny. Well, fuck me, man. I must say, successful uh, episode. I'm not going to lie. The episodes with just you and I are just fucking so fun. I mean, I love I love guests as well. I I'm very I'm very sad that we are guests couldn't come today because well, I got an STD. <laughs> just kidding, oh just kidding, Dude, just kidding. Hopefully not. We're not announcing guests ever again. No more. You'll just you'll get the opening of the episode. Is we got a guest for you today. <laughs> I mean, unless if we know, like, I mean, what with. with Brandon and Shannon, I mean, like, yeah, like, yeah, we can get them on. They, they live, fucking live with us. Of like, course, they can come on anytime they want. Uh, but hopefully next week we will be in person. Yes. Because we always feed off each other even more. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have this person that we have in mind. And we will have some fucking stories to tell. Now we'll have to keep it a little discretionary. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking about I'm thinking I'm thinking about doing it live. Then again, that might be a really bad idea to do it live. I like you just giving me that look. <laughs> You're like, mm, maybe. You know, you gotta edit me a lot. <laughs> I, I. You've been good. You've been you've been very good. I've been uh you you haven't actually. I think I've done more work on myself, editing a few things than I've edited you actually. But man, fucking the other podcast, on the other hand, <laughs> copy, edit, cut, delete, man, man, dude, the worst one was, was with Sean and Corey. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I was like, dude, I, I'm not airing this. <laughs> this Wait, Sean and Corey, for which one? Oh, this was a while ago. This was like back like in, uh, oh man. July? Because we did one, uh, like sometime last year, like in I think last April. Because I had Corey, I had Sean come on my, my when I was doing sheet time. I had Sean come on se- alone separately, and he, he he and I just hung out and we just fuck it. it was, that was a great podcast actually. <laughs> and then then Corey came alone. Corey came, <laughs> and then yes. and then and then a few weeks later, they both were like. I, I think we did like an open mic and we were, it was Saturday. Yeah. And we we're so close to my, my apartment. Miranda was in here and I'm like, y'all want to come over and do a podcast? And they're like, fuck yeah, dude, let's do it. So yeah, that was a, that was a fun night. But, and then, and then a few, a few months after that, they both came back and, oh man, <laughs> we, uh, we ordered pizza. We got, we got the pizza driver on the podcast we we call Kevin Holly. It was oh, I, insanity. I want the unedited clip. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> it's somewhere. I uh, yeah, maybe yeah, if I did that, I'd probably have to put it on like Patreon, where people have to pay for it. <laughs> There's some people you just you should have to pay for. Absolutely. Like having Corey, Sean, and Kevin, and you and all the, together, oh, and dude. the pizza. We we called Kevin. And uh, yeah, Kevin was just you know being Kevin, <laughs> and the and then the pizza guy. He I remember the pizza guy said something about like yeah, I fucking want to kill my mom, and I'm like Jesus Christ, <laughs> yo, he's gonna be on white trash and in trouble, bro. <laughs> Soon, yeah, it's like fucking five star pizza delivery driver, fucking Bill, Bill O, Bill O Frenchy mixed health insurance, Steen. What <laughs> what the fuck? That's a great Dude, name. You know what I love about Kevin Holly. What's that? You know, you have people in life that are fucking torrential cunts. 
you know, they're toxic as hell. And mm-hmm. like, even if they show you immediately, you give them a pass and all that. Yeah. Kevin does not give that at all. Kevin is like one of those uber optimistic people. Kevin oh, yeah. is a good person to be around. No, um, he's, he's one of my best friends. He's one of my first friends I made in comedy. Uh, he started like a month or two after me. Uh, so basically we, we've been going at it together. Uh, you know, Kevin's the kind of guy he, he did radio for years. So he know he knows all the comedians in the area. He's been friends with them for a while, but, and there's like even people that, you know, don't like him for some reason. I'm like, how do you not like Kevin Holly? Such a fucking sweetheart. You like, still look, look, can't say anything bad about him. No, I mean, probably for political differences, maybe because, because, you know, there are a lot of, you know, fucking, uh, queefy yeah. libs and, and, and Kevin, you know, Ke- Kevin's like a, a, a little right leaning centrist. He's, yeah, he, he, you know, he, 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 a lot of people that lose by default. Exactly. And, you know, Kevin was like, yeah, this comic. Was- <laughs> oh, I love it. But Kevin, you know, he, you know, he would tell me about like, you know, like people that he would call considered friends back then, they would like talk shit on him and, and say, say like, fuck you, you're a bitch. And Kevin's like, hey, I still love him though. And I'm like, but Kevin, man, you can't let people kick you like that, man. That's not cool. And he, he's like, yeah, but you know, I know them. Like we, like we go back, you know, he said, it's just a weird fucking time. They'll probably come around. I said, hopefully, man, because I mean, I don't, I don't want to see people fucking, you know, bagging on you for no reason. I mean, just because you have your opinion, fuck them. So a lot of people don't know this. Um, I used to work with one of Kevin's like ex fiancés. I think you told and me this. The, either yeah. way, I'm gonna tell it because we're on the potty, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <All right. laughs> um, I don't want to say her name because I don't know if she would want that type of attention. I'm Leslie Fink- Leslie Finkelstein. LB. Leslie Finkelstein. I'm gonna call her LB. Um. <laughs> She was awesome. I called her my work sister. You know, like every morning we walked to get coffee together and shit. So when I started doing comedy, she messaged me and she was like, hey, I'm glad that you actually like are following what is your true calling. You are supposed to be a comic. Fuck That's yeah, dude. Natural personality. I was like, thanks. I appreciate that. She goes, um, she, I, I did a couple of shows and then she messaged me and she goes, hey, just so you know, you're doing comedy with one of my exes. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, really? Who is it? And she goes, no, no, you'll, you'll like him. He's a really good dude. He's, he's a very good guy. His name's Kevin Holly. And I was like, oh, shit, yeah. I fucking I met him my first time, you know? And uh, and she goes, yeah, I talked to him, about, uh, to, to him about you. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like, Uh-oh. So we got <laughs> about EJ. We're fucked. And I went to a one. And he was there, and he goes, hey, can I talk to you after the show? And I was like, yeah, sure, man. I went out back, and a lot of guys will take an opportunity to shit on their significant other or especially their ex. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of the easiest shots you can take. Somebody not there to defend themselves, and so many guys are like, that bitch is a cunt fucker. Yep. Kevin had nothing, but he didn't – I don't think he truly knew, like, LB's in my relationship – he had nothing but positive things to say. He was like, dude, she is like salt of the earth type of person, a good person. It's sad that it didn't work out. She was like a mother to my kids. Oh, and like Kevin's that type of person. Never anything negative to say whatsoever. Mm-mm. We got to get Kevin on the fucking potty just to get him to say something negative. <laughs> oh, he'll come on. He'll come. Gonna corrupt you. <laughs> he'll, he'll for sure come on the pod. Yeah. He's just a good dude. Like, and I mean that. I'm not over here trying to stroke anybody's dick, but there's a lot of people that are around the scene that we wouldn't vibe with because we know things and, you know, are negative people. And then there's people that, you know, are good people. Yeah. I, I try to be around positive people, man. You know, because yeah, you are with me. You're, I mean, fuck you. I'm just kidding. But not here. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're, no, nah, every time I'm around you, it's always a good time. It's always a good I time. Try. Yeah, man. Like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. For, first met you, you were a lot, but then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know what? This guy's good peoples, man. I like this guy. And fucking yeah. Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Miranda, you know, we we basically yeah, we fell in love with you and Shannon, and I'm like, ah, these guys are fucking, they're the real deal. We love you guys. You know, it's always funny because uh, I've been told my whole life. My best friend loves to say this to people. 
think, look, I'm going to warn you. He's a lot. He's a lot at first. You might hate him, <laughs> but he's kind of like a mushroom. He grows on you. Yeah. you know, once you really get to know him, like, I'm like, oh, and I've actually heard him tell people that when he didn't know I was right around the corner. And yeah. Was like, oh. Mm -hmm. No, you were my, no. See, I grew up in Ocala. You know, it's a very um, southern town. And, you know, it's close to Georgia. Uh, so I knew a lot of I knew a lot of yous, <laughs> and, and and I had a lot of good friends that were yous. You know, they're like like people like there are guys that like, you know, came off very a lot, and 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 sometimes people were kind of like, ah, man, they're way too much. But I'm like, but hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, once they you know get to know you. Once, once when you see the other side of who they are, you won't fucking you'll be friends with them for for a long ass time. And I'm like, that's basically with EJ, right there, man. It's just like, hey, I don't like short term friends. I'll give you the blunt and the upfront, right? Um, and like you've got to see the other side of me. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the people that do, I consider. That when he means the other side, he means his butthole. Oh, I can't even stand up at the moment. <laughs> I'll show you this. I mean, God damn. I haven't even known you for a year, and I've already seen your ass, your balls, and your wiener already. They're all nice. <laughs> the, 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 the trifecta, the fucking Triforce, Legend of Zelda. We're like the Holy Trinity. <laughs> the Holy Trinity. The Father, Son, and the Holy shit, that's a penis. <laughs> the unholy trinity <laughs> the uncircumcised trinity you're, you're, you're circumcised you're circumcised yeah i'm a half a kike half a kike <laughs> are we allowed to say that? Uh, <laughs> you're making me do work I, mean, I, I didn't even mean to fucking say that it just came out of my mouth what dude okay the other night at title like i did the whole hate fucking right <laughs> yeah that guy like that, that whole right side of the room, they were there since five o'clock. They were toasty. They were fun. Oh, yeah. Right? They put a lot into the hay bucket and they put some. When I look at the thing and I go, uh, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, they put the kike supreme and the guy's name. And I'm like, I don't even know who the fuck this is, but I know it's a setup. <laughs> and then I did the whole like, play on words thing that I do for uh, certain like, you know what that sounds like a good idea what what, uh, what Ryan should do like a kind of like a bottom of the barrel show like get like 10 or like like 7 to 10 comics give us like 10 minutes and we all just do only shit from the paint bucket or like just cry Dude, I got an idea stuff. I got an idea as soon as we end this um, hold on. actually we can end this we can end this right now and we can we can talk for a little bit yeah, it's, we, we can go for a bit. <laughs> White Trash in a Trouble. I'm Scotty Chi. I'm EJ Salter. And, you're and not we gonna, are. White Trash in a Trouble. You're not going to listen to the second uh, conversation we're going to have because you guys are lame. Goodbye. Wait. Yeah. To be a Billy Mays here, uh -huh. we have something we're starting. We we do. Do you do Do you want to announce it? Oh, please. Okay. Right. Yes, yeah. um, so, Scotty and I are both big history buffs. Yes. Scotty actually majored in history, right? And minored, um, and minored in attracted people. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he broke a G-string fingering A minor. All right. I got to cut that part out, too. <laughs> All right. Both big time history buffs. I even right. have a cup. If you'll give me actually a second, mm -hmm. I will grab this. What is it, like a fucking cup that comes from your nuts? Are you gonna be like, this is the cup I wore when I played football when I played foosball with Bobby Boucher? He's getting something, everybody. It's a lot that dead air, <laughs> but my sister had me. Uh, this cup made for me. Uh, nice history buff with Abraham Lincoln. And, some, and on the back side, something I always say because I'm a fucking Greek. Shit, it kind of froze. I'm a history buff. 
I'm a history <laughs> And then Abe Lincoln flexing on the front side. So we're both really big history buffs. And yes. always after we get <clears throat> off of the podcast, we talk for about a fucking hour. And we always end up talking about history. And when Scotty first told me that he was a history major, I was like, oh, oh sweet. I can't <laughs> start a conversation with someone. <laughs> and there's not many people that you get to do that with. Nope. So Scotty and I are doing a history podcast together. We right on two goofs talking about ghosts. <laughs> two goofs talking about ghosts. That's basically what, what we're called? doing. I I, th- I think white trash and intelligent is is a fucking good name for the pod. Actually, for that for that one. <laughs> white trash and intelligent. <laughs> Without the risk of it sounding like a genocide, let's eliminate the white trash. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we haven't decided. I mean, we we have we got some ideas. Uh, we don't know like when exactly. I mean, we're gonna do it. I mean, I know we talked about doing it immediately after White Trash on Mondays, but I mean, you know, it's it's fucking endless. That what what we can do, we can do it. Uh, you know, we can't tell you exactly Doggy when. Missionary sixty nine. <laughs> cowgirl. Cow pile driver. So many ways we can do it. The Cosby sweater. What. Uh, <laughs> Oh, do you live in the bottom of the Well, He's in trouble because he was putting things that, where they don't fucking belong. I asked for pills and Bill Cosby. Uh, came. <laughs> All right. We're at one. This there. Uh, we'll, and we will definitely work on the history one very soon. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Wait for it. Wait for it. Goodbye.